Our final Jeopardy category today for the three of you. Legislation. Think about that. Make your wages. We will return with a clue. Wow, that was a... Uh... A couple of ballsy moves there by Kaveri. Welcome to the final wager. I'm Keith Williams. Of course, ballsy moves are a lot of the time what win games. More often than they lose games, I'd say. And uh, that 8,000 wager would have put her in third place, would have still kept her in contention, but now Nicole's eliminated because Kaveri is leading Peter by 11,000. So this is straightforward. Kaveri's just got a wager, uh, whatever that would be, 5,601. Peter's got to wager everything. Nicole didn't find any daily doubles, so she could take advantage of them, but, you know, no one was hunting for them toward the end of that second round. There are three categories left. Both daily doubles were in play, and we just worked our way top to bottom. Oh, well. I gotta say, it, it must be weird filming the first week of games in Culver City and then filming the second week of games somewhere else. Not because there's a month and a half of delay between the first appearance and the second appearance, but when you film on location, as I did in my college championship at Yale, it takes some time to get used to that feeling of, wow, I'm in front of 1,600 people or however many it was here, it's probably a lot more, and they're all yelling, and it's not what I expected, at least with the quarterfinals everyone's on the same page, and everyone has the chance to get used to that feeling for a little while uh, without being in a do-or-die situation. Teen Tournament Kids, which I guess are going to be airing in September, will have that opportunity, but and all three of them are on the same page, but it just seems like a, a quick exit from that. I think we've only had one week of uh, actual regular play games filmed on location maybe 17 years ago in Boston. I just learned about that recently. I didn't know about it. Uh, what else was there tonight? I'm watching this live, which is kind of exciting because I don't get that opportunity very often. So I can't fast forward, although I did write down some things. Uh, the uh, oh, Another advantage to having the quarterfinals on location first is that Alex's long-winded intro doesn't cost us any clues uh, later on in the round because uh, we I think we left, what, four uncovered clues on the board tonight? No, oh, well, uh, there was an obvious edit when uh, Kaberi said Taka, which I'd never heard that pronunciation before, but I know that there are a lot of uh, different foreign pronunciations of certain countries and certain capitals, like you know, Kiribati is not pronounced like that at all. And uh, I went in doubt. I wouldn't. I don't know if I would play around with that too much. Maybe that took away some momentum. Maybe it actually added to her momentum. I don't know. Uh, but I would personally, I would typically go for whatever the acceptable pronunciation is. Let's see, um, yeah, Asian capital seemed like a a lost opportunity for some more money there. Tashkent, for example, uh, Uzbekistan. That should be. Right out the category right away. for Final Jeopardy today, as you can see, is legislation. Since this is the first day of competition in Washington, D.C., we thought it would be a great idea to have somebody who is known and very popular as a teacher deliver the Final Jeopardy clue. Would you please welcome Dr. Joe Biden? Joe Biden. <laughs> The original law called this was passed in 1944. Today, there's a post 9-11 version that also pays for 36 months of university education. You have 30 seconds. Good luck. I think that might be the first time I've ever heard a clue without the ping. Can't really do that noise too well, but that one seems, this one seems pretty straightforward. I, We'll be surprised if anyone misses this one. And uh, Kaveri looks like she's in good shape to advance. I mean, she already is in good shape to advance. She just needs to get it right or you to get it wrong. But... Nicole, you are in third place, so we begin with you. What did you write? You wrote down, what is the GI Bill? You're absolutely correct, and that means you're going to add 
9,400. That takes you up to 18,800. Let's go to Peter. He had 15,600. We're looking for the GI Bill. We find it. Your wager. Important. It's a strange graphic. That brings you up to 23,000. Instead of uh, showing the blue and then fading in the white, just kind of shows up at once. Did she get the GI Bill? She did. And the wager, 4601. Kaberi, congratulations. You oh, okay. Tomorrow, right here. Join us then. So long, I think we might be in a for a long week if I couldn't do that mental math properly. It's a 5601, so I was a little taken aback by the uh, 4601 wager from Kaberi, but she's in to the semifinals, uh, or so the finals, sorry, and it uh, leaves the possibility that all three players from Friday could appear in the finals, unless for some reason they're paired up tomorrow, Wednesday. I actually haven't looked at the matchups yet, so. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm a little bit as surprised as you are, or as you were when you probably looked at it on Saturday. Uh, good game, just wish we had gone hunting for the Daily Doubles. Other than that, uh, not too much to complain about, and looking forward to another great game tomorrow. We'll see you then, right here, on the final wager.